The following video provides a brief overview of the Seeky scheduler. Within the production orders area of the system, you can either use the master routings templates to manually create new production orders if you're operating it as a standalone system. Alternatively, you can interface the scheduler to your existing ERP MRP database and import the data directly or use CSV files. The production planner can then see which new jobs have been added and has control over when they are released. So here you can select individual or multiple works orders and then release them to active. In this example, we'll focus on the connector job and once in the active table, it is ready to be scheduled. So now when we go into the production scheduling area of the system, any new jobs that have been added will be read in. A prompt box will come up saying that we are going to, because this box is ticked, schedule new work around the existing work. We can then choose from any of our pre-configured scheduling rules before saving. This will then schedule the new jobs around all the existing orders. And if we scroll down, there is the connector job we've just added. It's currently showing that whilst we need it by the 28th of August, it's not due to finish until the 19th of September and will be 22 days late. So in the deviation column, the visual colour coding of up to five tolerances enables you to quickly identify jobs that will be finished late as they will appear red in the table. So let's say this connector is a critical part and it's a high priority for our customer. We need to do something to improve its completion date. So double click on the job to access the planning board. Here the job that's white with the black border, if you blind the others out, is the connector job we're interested in. We can also see our available capacity, out of shift time and the different works orders that are scheduled to each resource. So we have resources to the left and a time scale across the top. We can adjust this screen to show as much as we need at any one time. I can then pick up the last operation of this connector job and I can see that I have capacity down at the front so I can drop it in. The system knows that I have to do previous operations first so it's actually forced them in. By doing so it's made some gaps in the schedule so we can then use a feature called fill in holes to try to fill in the gaps that we've created. It's all a what if scenario until we want to save it. So we can go back to our production order list and we can look at the consequences of the changes that we've made. So we can see the coloured arrows here. The red arrow means that the end date has moved out and the green arrow means we've improved it. So if we look at our connector job, the positive impact of the changes we've made is that it's now due to be completed two days early, which is a net improvement of 24 days. You can now also look at the impact of the changes to the rest of the works orders. So anything that is green in the deviations list, I know is still due to be delivered on time, but I'd be looking closely at anything highlighted amber or red, knowing that they've now gone late or later. Remember though, this is all a what if scenario. So if it doesn't give us the improvements we need, then I can click load and it will revert back to the last save. But for this example, I'll save it and it will become my new live schedule. So all the arrows will disappear. We can then look at resource info, which is the workload on each individual resource. In the workload view, we can see capacity and utilisation figures across a period of time defined by this box, which I can either increase the size of or move to cover the period we want to view. I can also have visibility of future capacity from this top bar, with the peaks getting higher as the available capacity increases the further ahead we look. Colour coding on the utilisation percentage provides a fast visual indicator of any bottlenecks we may have. We can also sort on this column to view our best or underperforming resources. In the production order list view, if we look here at a live works order, we can see the state of its individual operations. Again, colour coding provides a fast visual reference with completed operations marked green, yellow is work in progress, blue paused and red not started. This live operation status information can be derived using Seeky's integrated shop floor WIP booking software.